about to enter another dimension. It's not a dimension of sight. It's not a dimension of sound. But it is a dimension of unseen powerful forces. Forces that are responsible for advances in modern medicine. But forces that must be treated with appropriate caution and with respect. Enter with me into the magnetic zone. Submitted for your consideration, this exceptional machine, the Magnetic Resonance Imager, or MRI. It's a magnificent diagnostic tool of modern medicine. It provides the physician with remarkably clear and accurate pictures of the inside of the human body. These are MR images of the brain. Here, in addition to the brain, we can see the eyes, sinuses, teeth, even the blood vessels. At the heart of the MR system is an extraordinarily powerful magnet. Whatever your responsibilities are in the hospital or imaging center, whether you might only occasionally come in contact with the MR system, or if it's a part of your daily routine, you should be familiar with safety procedures and possible hazards when in the magnetic field. What makes MR different from the conventional X-ray or CAT scan, which use X-ray beams traveling through the body, projecting an image onto a photographic film or displaying it on a video monitor. MRI uses a strong magnet and radio frequency waves to generate an image on a video monitor. There is no ionizing radiation involved in MRI like the type you'd find in X-rays. In MRI, the radio waves are used to excite certain molecules within the magnetic field. When this is done, the protons, a part of these molecules, send out signals which are received, digitized, and displayed as images. The force of the magnet, its magnetic field, does not create any health risks for most of us. But the presence of the magnet does raise many safety considerations, chief among them that the magnetic force exerted by the magnet is powerful enough to pull magnetic objects right out of your hands. In this video, we will show you how strong the magnetic field can be, so that you can fully appreciate its power. We will also discuss general guidelines to follow while working around the magnet. It will be important for you to know which equipment in the area is MR compatible. What should you be concerned about during an emergency situation? We'll also look at patient-related safety procedures, which include proper screening of the patient and preparing the patient for the MR examination. And finally, we will touch upon safety considerations with surface coils and with SAR, the specific absorption rate in MR. So let's begin our exploration of this unique dimension. Let's cross over into the magnetic zone. We're here in one of the research facilities at uh, Siemens Medical Systems in order to demonstrate some of the effects of the strong magnetic fields that are associated with the MRI scanners. Uh, here we have a one Tesla uh, magnetic field strength scanner uh, that converts to about 10,000 Gauss. That's about 20,000 times the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, what I have demonstrated right here is uh, a chain uh, a metal chain with a wrench that's attached and on the opposite side is attached to the wall and uh, as you can see the magnetic field is suspending this uh, in midair. Now I must warn and caution that this is not to be demonstrated uh, at your own site. Uh, primarily we have a lot more experience as well as control over such a demonstration. This is not to be tried at your own institution. What we really wanted to demonstrate, first off, is that something that is ferromagnetic, like this wrench and like this chain, uh, wants to tend to align with the magnetic field and will have a force exerted upon it uh, such that it will want to travel right into the highest portion of the magnetic field, which lies about four feet into the bore. Now what I want to do is show you how fast this falls off, this magnetic field falls off. This is a very strong pull and it's a little tough to get it started here, but as I move this back, you can see the chain 
all of a sudden drops. And at this point, there's very little pull, very little pull at all on this wrench. Now, as I bring it back, I must hold on tight because the pull becomes extremely rapid. And all I have to do is come in one more foot and the force becomes so strong that the magnet will hold this in midair. If, in fact, I was to bring this about a foot closer, I very well may not be able to hold on to the, onto the wrench. The strength of the field would be that much stronger. So we're looking at fringe fields that go from Earth's magnetic field, only at a mere three, four feet away, to the center of the magnet, which is 20,000 times the Earth's magnetic field, all within 10 feet. So you can imagine something that's ferromagnetic, the forces that are exerted on this increase extremely rapidly as you go closer and closer to the bore. All it takes is a few feet. If a piece of uh, ferromagnetic material were to escape and fly into the magnet, it's going to be attracted with such a force as to form a projectile. And it will actually accelerate towards the center of this magnet where the field is the strongest and therefore it's attracted to the center and as it goes past the center it accelerates and it, as it travels, travels to the end it reverses direction and swings back and forth and like a pendulum. Uh, and I'm going to sh demonstrate to you with this, with this tennis ball that has been filled with nuts and bolts to uh, fly into the magnet. Okay, here we go. See, it's, it's pulling right on me and if I let go of it, now just imagine this to be objects such as a hemostat or a oxygen tank or a pen and a patient lying in the magnet. Clearly this could cause a great deal of uh, damage to the magnet and injury to the patient on the table. So it's important that we check uh, our clothing for ferromagnetic objects before we enter the magnet area. This is what would happen if anybody with uh, any piece of equipment, like a janitor walking in with a metallic mop, or a uh, anesthesiologist walking in with uh, medical equipment, which is more, more common, it would just take perhaps one step before he realizes there's something wrong and it could be extracted from him and uh, would be basically uh, pulled into the magnet, would fly right into the bore of the magnet. Whenever you take any equipment into the magnet room, you must be sure that it is compatible to MR. In other words, it must be non-magnetic. There is quite a bit of non-magnetic equipment available today, but always make sure. Check it with your small refrigerator magnet. Facilities should have signs posted at all entrances to the magnet room warning that you are entering a strong magnetic field. IV poles, drug boxes, wheelchairs, stretchers, oxygen tanks are all available made of non-magnetic substances. But it's probable that your hospital or imaging facility might also have the magnetic variety, so be sure to check carefully. Generally speaking, most crash carts, mechanical pumps, hospital stretchers and wheelchairs, scissors, stethoscopes, patient clipboards, oxygen tanks, and fire extinguishers are magnetic. Again, these items and any others that are magnetic should never go into the magnet room. Be aware, the greater the mass of an object, the greater its attraction by the magnet. Large objects like oxygen tanks, fire extinguishers, hand tools can be pulled right from your hands, creating a dangerous flying projectile. Small objects like hairpins and paper clips can fly into the magnet undetected. This may not injure the patient or damage the magnet but the quality of the images can be severely affected, compromising the MR examination. Remove your credit cards from your pockets. The magnetic strip will be erased. Watches, beepers, pocket calculators, most mechanical or electronic devices can be damaged by the magnetic field. Don't take them inside. If you wear a pacemaker or other implanted medical device, even a hearing aid or a TENS unit, do not enter the magnet room. The magnetic field could disrupt the operation of these devices. Finally, the best policy is, if possible, don't enter the examination room without being accompanied by trained MR personnel. There's an emergency in the imaging center. Perhaps a patient requires immediate assistance inside the magnet and the crash card is needed.
Maybe there's a fire somewhere in the facility. Of course, emergencies like this are rare, but it's critical that we be prepared for them. Depending upon the emergency, your first priority could be to remove the patient from the scan room. In any event, be careful only to allow non-magnetic equipment into the magnet room. In the hectic and excited atmosphere of an emergency, this becomes particularly critical. But stop and think for a second. You certainly do not want an inexperienced person to add to the crisis. Imagine, for example, the local firefighters or the Code Blue team rushing into the magnetic field with a magnetic crash cart. Whatever the emergency might be, there must be a safety procedure in place. This will be characteristic to each facility's specific needs. We recommend that every facility have written protocols and procedures to deal with emergencies. Everyone who might be called to assist in an emergency must be aware of these procedures. In an extreme emergency, when the magnetic field must be turned off quickly, an emergency quench can be initiated. This releases the cryogens, liquid nitrogen or helium that surround the magnet. During a quench, the cryogens turn to gas and are vented through special ducting to the outside. If this venting is somehow compromised, the helium gas will enter the magnet room and displace the oxygen, forming a fog-like effect. Suffocation is possible. The superfreezing temperatures of the gases could also burn your skin. So, in the event of any emergency cryogen venting, the best policy is to evacuate the patient and yourself. Again, a quench should be considered only in extreme situations. After a quench, call your local service engineer immediately. Extensive service support will be required before you can restart the system. If you are an MR technologist, you play a very important role in assuring the safety and comfort of your patients. Proper screening is the key. There should be no surprises during an MR examination as long as you follow proper patient screening procedures. The patient interview is critical. Patients should be screened for prior surgeries or injuries. Have they ever had any brain surgery? How about previous heart surgery? If so, what kind? Have they ever had any previous injuries to the eye that might have involved metal fragments from welding or shrapnel? Many metal workers might not even know that they have metal fragments in their eyes. Any metal within the patient's orbits could potentially move inside the magnetic field. Does the patient have implants of any kind? Patients with pacemakers, magnetic aneurysm clips, or implanted electromechanical or electromagnetic devices should never be placed in the magnetic field. Any external medical devices like hearing aids or TENS units should be removed. What other health problems does the patient have? Is the patient prone to seizures? For that matter, why is the patient having this examination? Is your patient alert and oriented to respond to questions, or is a family member present? You may be asked about MRI scans of pregnant patients. There has been little research done on patients who are pregnant. It should be determined by a physician if the potential risks of the MR exam outweigh the potential hazards to the fetus of other imaging modalities. Proper screening of the patient will help avoid the possibility of scanning a patient with a condition that is contraindicated for an MR examination. The patient should change into a gown. Do a careful physical assessment of the patient. Pay special attention to the possibility that the patient is wearing a prosthesis, wig, hairpins, or any other metal like jewelry. Makeup should be removed. Some deodorants contain metal alloys and should be removed. Patients with tattooed eyeliner should not be scanned. Be sure to explain the MR examination to the patient. If you followed all these safety considerations, the examination should be able to begin without any additional concern. Communication with the patient is a vital safety consideration. Make sure you stay in touch using the intercom throughout the examination. Exercise appropriate caution when moving the patient into and out of the bore. It's always recommended that you place some sort of covering between the coil and the patient. All Siemens coils purchased for use with the MR system are designed for use in a specific way. Using the coils in ways not recommended by Siemens could result in harm to the patient or the coil itself. In fact, all MR equipment should only be used in ways recommended by the manufacturer. Always make sure that the cables of the coils, as well as ECG and peripheral pulse cables, are not touching the patient and that they are straight and not twisted around themselves or each other. 
although your service engineer will check the cables of the coils. If you notice a rip or a tear in the casing of the cable, do not use the coil and immediately bring this to the attention of your Siemens authorized service engineer. During the MR examination, RF power is transmitted by the body coil to the patient. This signal, when received back by the system, is interpreted into an image. The SAR, or specific absorption rate, is the amount of RF power per unit of tissue mass that is absorbed by the patient. Some imaging sequences, some coils, and even some patients require higher levels of RF power. The system computes the SAR based upon the weight that you enter during registration. An incorrect weight should never be entered as this could cause the system to operate at higher transmitted values and potentially heat up the patient. Since RF energy has the potential to increase the patient's body temperature, the SAR level is monitored by the magnetome system. The system normally limits the SAR to a level of up to 1.5 watts per kilogram of body weight, but this SAR level can be increased to as much as 3 watts per kilogram, depending upon the patient's ability to regulate and detect their body temperature. If the patient is febrile or comatose, or if their ability to regulate or detect their body temperature is compromised, you must take great care not to overheat the patient. In this event, the SAR values should not be increased. As healthcare professionals, the health and safety of our patients is of prime importance. Please remember that your Siemens application specialist is always ready to answer all your questions regarding safety and the MRI. Submitted for your consideration. Understand and respect the power of the magnet, the center of the MRI's ability to create spectacular pictures inside the human body. And understand and be aware of safety considerations for you, your colleagues, and your patients. It's critical before you enter the magnetic zone.